As a believer in Christ, we are called to follow after Jesus and go and make disciples. Upon this, we are called to be fully devoted and true. But what does that look like in our everyday lives? And what does this mean for the church? This is a podcast dedicated to teaching and discussion surrounding the subject of discipleship. Hello, everyone. Good to be with you wherever this finds you. Today, joining us for our fifth podcast is Pastor Mike Brandt, longtime pastor and church leader, founder of Shepherding the Shepherds Ministry and Church Consultant Work. What am I leaving out, Mike? Uh, probably a lot. I don't know. Uh, uh, only the fact that I was your internship pastor. <laughs> well, I've been excited to talk to you of all people. I probably should have had you on the first podcast, so I, my apologies to that. But uh, great to be talking with you. Uh, what is what is keeping you busy these days? Because I know you're busy. Well, as you know, when we began the ministry of Shepherding the Shepherds, at first it was a ministry that included some visiting of church sites and ministry sites and then having a lot of leaders come and stay at our guest house in the hills, in the Black Hills of South Dakota. But as time has gone on, more of our work has been on the road. And so we sold our site in the Black Hills and have moved back to Sioux Falls. And right now, due to the virus, most of the work that I'm doing is by Zoom conferences. But we do have about seven locations set up for as soon as the virus restrictions are are lifted. Uh, uh, primarily then church consultant work where you're working with pastors. Um, is, is that primarily where things are at right now? Yeah, it has, it has really varied. Uh, at first, we just saw this as a ministry of care and a ministry of encouragement. But then as time has unfolded, a lot of different Uh, needs have been revealed. And so in some cases, we go in where there have been um, challenges in ministry. Uh, Some of those challenges have been uh, due to uh, personality conflicts. Uh, Some have been challenges due to, um, as the scripture refers to, when a brother falls, uh, we should, in a spirit of gentleness, seek to restore them. Uh, Sometimes the challenges have been positive ones, but still challenges where our church is growing and they're wondering, what's the next step that we should take? And should we visit with someone about taking that next step? So we have been blessed with a great variety of opportunity. That's that's great. I, it, It's such a critical work for pastors, the shepherding, the shepherds piece of that and working with churches, so critical to church work. Um, I'm so glad that you're doing what you are doing. And this is all going to apply very well to the scripture focus of today's podcast. Uh, The verse, I'm going to read it for us here. And uh, for those uh, listening, wherever you're at, if you have an opportunity, uh, open up a Bible and go to Hebrews 13, 7, just one verse we're going to focus on. Hebrews 13, 7 says this, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, Consider the outcome of their faith or their way of life and imitate their faith. Again, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Let's start with that. That Let's jump right in. Let's start with that first word, remember, remember, remember. That's a you know, common theme in the Bible. Remember, in this case, your leaders. The term here speaks to being mindful of them and recalling their instruction, following their leadership, and speaks to a disciple following a disciple. Uh, we might call that mentorship, too. Uh, here it's tied to those who have instructed us in the Word of God. Why is this so important in the day and age in which we're living, Pastor Brent? I I believe it is first and foremost simply because the scripture encourages it. I I have believed in my own personal walk that if the scripture draws attention to something, then that's reason enough uh, Mm -hmm. to really pursue it. Mm -hmm. And I saw it in my own father, uh, who became a great mentor and consultant to me, one who discipled me. And then I've seen it in the lives of so many other men that I have admired and the work that God has done uh, through their lives and through their ministry. Mm. You know, as I, as I think about, you know, 
leaders have led you and, and now you're in a ministry of, of doing so. So obviously you're, you're working with people that, you know, maybe you've, you haven't known before, but you step in and, and work maybe through a crisis with them. Um, speaking to just the remembering your leaders, clearly it, there was some need for this to have been said to the early church, but in the day and age in which we're living, it, it seems like, um, there just isn't this respect for leadership or authority for that matter, at least what seems what, what was, uh, maybe speak to that. Probably one of the things that each one of us wrestles with is that spirit of independence. Mm -hmm. We more or less want to be an island unto ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and I really, I believe that, uh, it is an indication of a great weakness within us, um, and it really leads to lots of other difficulties that we probably could avoid if we had a humble spirit yeah. of recognizing that God has intended to invest in us through others. Yeah. I mean, that's discipleship right there, and yet we we are resistant in that independent fleshly nature to... Yeah, even even to mentorship, um, but but just humbling ourselves and allowing someone else to step into our lives and instruct us. Um, and and I, I think where the struggle is with so many people, more specifically, is to really go go deeper. And I think so many believers in Christ un understand fundamentally what discipleship is, mentorship, all of those things. They agree with it. But who in our lives are we really opening up to? And, and I'm speaking directly to leaders here, too. Are we uh, allowing to speak into our lives and, and really allow someone to come alongside of you and instruct you, maybe even rebuke you um, where, where you need it? Uh, that's difficult for, for everyone. And yet what the scripture is telling us, and we're going to get into that, is that it's, it's necessary and it's commanded, right? Yes, yes. I uh, also would like to just add this thought, Nick, that as I have sought to be a good mentor, I have thought about this. Do the ones that I'm seeking to influence realize that I myself came under the influence of other godly people? Do they, do they see that I still, in my walk today, value the investment mm -hmm. that that people make in my life. And not all the mentors that I have are older than me. Right. I have many mentors in my life that are younger than me, and yet I believe God has brought them across the path of my life and my ministry uh, for, the, for the sole purpose of helping me develop my own personal faith and develop the ministry that he's entrusted to me. That's so important. Uh, kind of speaking to that as well, why is leadership so important for the church and really for every aspect of our lives? Kind of looking at the, the leadership side of that. Uh, we oftentimes hear people talking about equipping, equipping the saints mm -hmm. for the work of ministry in, in Ephesians chapter 4. That again, just a simple truth of God's word that we need to take heed to. And I believe that as I have uh, become a mentor to others, it's not, not so much that it's lightened the work, but it's really expanded the work. Yeah. That as I have invested in others by being a, a good mentor, a discipling people, then I produce someone by the grace of God that becomes stronger in their own personal walk and their own personal calling in life. It might be a, a husband or a wife, it might be an ob obedient child in a home, that as I've invested in them by the grace of God, then they become stronger in their personal faith. And then the work that God has entrusted to us corporately uh, becomes even stronger, not only for the present, but in the days, months, years to come, you're setting a good foundation for that work to continue and to expand. Yeah, absolutely. It might be a, a different way of, of looking at it um, from like a, a delegation standpoint that that as as leaders 
um, lead and we allow leader leaders to lead as you were talking about before uh, as you're working with someone else or even dele delegating, uh, I, I think you had a saying back when I was under your leadership in internship, it, it was something like, uh, many hands make more work. It's something, it's something like that. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Light work. It's many hands uh, increase the work to the glory of God. To the glory of God. And, and, and so, so when when we are discipling, when when we are leading, when we're allowing leaders to lead, that that actually increases the impact for the kingdom. Uh, that that's so good and an awesome uh, re reminder. Uh, kind of back to something we already touched on, but respect for leadership in a day and age where everyone has an opinion. Uh, we talked about kind of that independent side. Um, and, and we all have that. And, and it's certainly kind of a, an American thing, but respect for leadership in a day and age where everyone has an opinion and is entitled to it, it lends, I, I, I believe anyway, to a lack of respect and therefore care for leadership in general. We see this politically. We see it all over, you know, mass media and, 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 and social media. Uh, maybe, maybe just talk about that specifically too. Yeah, in ministry, sometimes it's like the old saying, uh, uh, don't confuse me with facts. My mind is already made up. Yes, yes. And I, I think sometimes as uh, leaders, spiritual leaders, uh, we oftentimes head into ministry with a thought in our own mind, this is the way to do it. This is the spirit in which to do it. And we don't want to have anybody else critique us yeah. Uh, we don't like to assess things very much. We we don't want to step back and really say, God, help me to to really assess, to examine uh, my own spirit, uh, examine my own intention, my own plan. Uh, we we tend to just want to charge ahead. Yeah. And I believe having great mentors in our lives will lead to just the opposite, where we don't want so much our own plan, but we really do want the will of God to be worked out in us. Yeah, and that that is so important as it would apply to any form of leadership or any any level of leadership that applies to to someone who is being one discipled one on one, mentored in that sense. It, it applies for church leaders. It, it it applies for our respect for political leadership. Um, if if we're really seeking the will of God, that and that's our heart that we want Jesus glorified and we want the will of God to be accomplished, as uh, on earth as it is in heaven. If, if that's really our our goal, then then we will um, we will seek the Lord on that and respect the leaders that He has appointed. The Scriptures tell us, right? Yeah. Amen. So what does this have to do with discipleship? Where well, obviously that, that's what we've been talking about. Mike, you've been training and, and shepherding and discipling church leaders. And I don't, not everyone listening to this is like maybe a, an appointed church leader. And yet actually we're all called to lead in, in some way. Um, but, um, you know, what, what has really stood out to you in that work when it comes to like mentoring leaders what has been a what have been what has been a blessing what, what where have been some of the challenges well probably one of the greatest uh, blessings has been to join whoever god has brought across my path in seeking out the counsel of god's word just like it states in the in the bible verse that we're focusing on who spoke the word of god to you uh, i've wanted to to know that when I've had the privilege of mentoring someone, discipling someone, that it's been on the basis of God's word and not not my opinion. Yeah, It hasn't been so much uh, techniques that I've shared with them, but rather the, the truth of God that will last forever and bring an eternal uh, return. Uh, that's, that's been vital for me. You know, as I, I think of it in, in this light, when I'm working with someone, regardless of uh, their belief system, uh, their past, what, what they're facing then, 
as a pastor, if I'm ministering to someone, if I am able to say something like, well, hey, don't take my word for it. Go to the scriptures, go to the word. It, it's so freeing to be able to say that. And it it almost entirely keeps argument out of that kind of context of 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 interaction, of communication. Because when you just say, hey, don't take my word for it. it, it's the word of God. Of course, allowing the word of God to do that work through the spirit in someone's life is always is always the best best way forward. And and I'm you know, I'm assuming that's exactly what you're speaking of when you're when you're talking to to leaders. What about what about some of the challenges? Probably, probably one of the challenges is a time challenge hmm. where often we don't recognize that this is really vital to invest our time in mentoring. Yeah. That yeah. it does take time. It, it takes a real investment, a consistent investment. And and so in this time of life, we often uh, hear, well, we want it to be instant. We want it to happen overnight. Yeah. And it it rarely happens overnight. It can because we have such a great God, but more times than not, it, it, it takes repeat a uh, repetitive uh, times together. It, it takes a practice. Uh, it takes an investment of a, a discipline, uh, just like yeah. we're talking about here, discipleship. It takes that disciplined spirit, and that gets to be one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, and I, I want to reiterate in this that, you know, as we're talking about discipleship and leadership, um, this applies to the body of Christ in its entirety. We're not just speaking to pastors or leaders or those with with a, a title like that, but we are all called to this in our lives. And, and there are so many wonderful and God-inspired creative ways to disciple and mentor and lead. I think of uh, a ministry in our church at Emmaus uh, that some of the women who um, are disciplined to jog and train for half marathons and marathons, uh, a few of them are involved in a ministry, one in particular, in which they uh, run with homeless. It's called, it's uh, running with the homeless and those who live at shelters. And it's just a way of them being able to come alongside uh, an, an, another woman or an, alongside another person and, and mentor them. They had to be intentional about it, though, to, to meet. And, and yet in all of our circles, we have people in which we can disciple, like like my children. Maybe maybe speak to that. Uh, the, uh, the opportunities are all around us. The other day, amidst this COVID-19 uh, uh, social distancing, I had a chance to talk to one of my own grandchildren, and we were that required distance apart. Yeah. And yet, yeah. I felt it was vital at this time when they too are facing a lot of stresses to invest in them. So yeah. there's just a simple example of wanting to live out my witness to one of my very own grandchildren and talk about a wonderful privilege of leadership. That's it. Yeah. And, and I, I dare say that sometimes that's the, that's the hardest place to discipleship because, you know, my kids, your, your grandkids, that sort of thing, your kids, you know, they know you and they see you every day or, or at one point they did. And, and yet it still has to be intentional, right? Yeah. If we could just uh, move on a little bit in that verse too, I think one of the yeah. really important parts of that verse is when it says, consider the result of their conduct. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons my dad was such an effective mentor in my life is that I saw the way that he had conducted his life, uh, not just in his public ministry, but in his private life. I saw his devotional life. I saw his quiet time, his times of prayer. I saw the way that he ministered to my mother. I heard him speak truth to me, even when I was living in rebellion against the things of God. 
-hmm. I saw the conduct of my father's heartfelt concern for the salvation of my own soul. And then after I came to a saving faith, I saw that conduct of the way that he ministered to the congregation that he was serving. I saw how he conducted himself in the community. And I also saw the results. I saw the result of declaring the word of God, not just through his tongue, but through his very actions. Yeah. The, the consider the outcome of their way of life. To me, too, that also speaks to someone who has been seasoned, who, is, who, who has been walking with the Lord for some time. Not that if you haven't been, you can't be of influence, but it certainly speaks to someone who, who you, you've seen this j just like with your dad. You saw it over years. You saw it over a lifetime. And, yes. and that testimony of faith um, was a strong one because you saw it in hard times and in good, good times and how, how his faith was something that was real, right? Yes. And, you know, that's one of the things that you uh, asked me to consider even in doing this podcast you asked, uh, what does this look like? Yeah, well, I think, you know, what it really looks like, first of all, if I'm wanting to have a mentor, a discipler in my life, I want to be able to see how God has worked in and through their life. Yeah. Yeah. Imitate their faith. A true discipleship is 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 following Jesus. It 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 comes right after this. Consider the outcome of their way of life. Um, but as we as we understand that discipleship is following uh, Jesus and not people, the Bible does teach us to imitate godly men and women of faith. Um, why is this important? Yeah. Well, in a mentoring relationship, it really has to do with uh, the ultimate desire to bring glory to God. And I believe when you were asking, you know, how does this flesh itself out? How does it really happen? What does it mean? Well, it really begins, I think, first of all, within your own heart. Do you recognize that in order to grow in a way that God has desired you to grow, that you do need to seek then good mentorship, good counsel in your own personal life? And then if you are the mentor, I think the very first thing that a good mentor needs to do is to be an excellent listener. Hmm. When, I, when I sit down with the various people that God has privileged me uh, to be a discipler in their life or a mentor in their life and ministry, the very first thing I want them to know is that I want to really listen to them. Hmm. I want to hear them. Even like Christ, when he was teaching the disciples, he heard them ask this question. Lord, teach us to pray. And then he taught them, pray in this manner, pray in this way. So if you're looking for a good mentor, be sure you're looking for one that will have a good listening ear. Mm. And then secondly, I believe that as that process flushes itself out, there has to be something within you that says, I'm willing to be accountable. A uh, good discipling has to be accompanied with solid accountability. Uh, when you're given a vision step, a, a strategic step to take, one step at a time, then someone that kind of holds holds you to that, holds you to the commitment that you've made. And then you just build one step upon another, and it's a wonderful journey. And you enjoy the steps of the journey, and you enjoy the destination of the journey yeah boy yeah going back to the, the that term accountability if there is one term that that the church and i'm including all of us in this my, myself included if there is one term that we need to grow in our understanding of and and be obedient to and that is being open to accountability in every area of our lives isn't it yes Every area. Accountability. It, it just seems to be the, the pariah of the society or the, or the culture that, that we live in, and, and that's all of us. 
Um, mm-hmm. And yet it really is what discipleship is all about when it comes to spiritual growth and things, yes. things like that. Um, what would you say to someone who is listening to this and, and, and they're, and they're wanting some, some really practical guidelines as to how they could get involved with, with someone in one-to-one discipleship uh, accountability group. Uh, what would you say to the church in that sense? Well, first of all, I think if you're looking to be a mentor to someone, I think the very first thing I would ask you is, have you had a mentor in your life? And if you can't say yes, then I think I would take one step back and say, Lord, right now, help me to recognize someone that's probably right within your sphere of influence right now. Help me to recognize that person that you want to use in my life, and then go and sit down with that person. Now, if you have a mentor in your life or you've been uh, discipled and are being discipled, and then you see people within your sphere of influence, you might be a pastor, uh, might be someone in your own church, uh, you might be someone as a lay man or woman that has people uh, that are around you, and, and you come alongside of them and say, if there's a way that I can be of a blessing to you, I want you to know that I'm willing. Just plant that seed, that thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's someone that's even in a crisis. Uh, that's what happens to me quite often. I'll, I'll receive a call maybe from a pastor's wife that will say, my husband's in a crisis right now, and I don't think he'll reach out to anybody. Would you mind just giving him a call? And so I'll give a pastor like that a call, a ministry leader a call. And quite often, they'll begin to open up. And I'm not always the one that mentors them. In some cases, I've been able to help them find someone that's really close to them and can connect them. So that's also a privilege. Yeah, that's so good. Uh, man, we, we could talk all day about this, or at least I could. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I, I just appreciate, um, you know, that encouragement from you and I'm so glad to have you on the podcast and be able to connect with you in this way. And I, I tried to give you two short examples or we run out of time. No, please, please. Yeah. Right now I'm being ministered to by someone I mentored. Really? My pastor right now is someone that when he, uh, became a member of the church I was serving. I, I had the privilege of ministering the Word of God to him. I had the privilege of seeing his wife come to saving faith when they became a part of our congregation. And I had the privilege of investing in him as he joined our ministry team, as he became a an elder, a deacon at our congregation. And then God called him into full-time ministry. He disciplined himself to go to the seminary. And now as I've moved back to Sioux Falls, he's now my pastor. And God is using him mightily in my own personal life. He's using him mightily in my own ministry. So mentorship has come full circle to me. That's awesome. The one I mentored is now being used of God to further a disciple and mentor me. And then this week, uh, I had a first happen. One of my very own grandchildren sent a gift, a support gift, to the work of shepherding. Oh, so God. here is a granddaughter that I had had the privilege of investing in her life, teaching in her life, teaching her simple things, even like the godly use of the resources he's entrusted to you, even in your financial resources. And now this past week, here she sends a gift to shepherding the shepherds, full circle. It's come right back to bless me and to bless the kingdom's work. That's just awesome. I, that that really is incredible. That's multiplication right there, and and it 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 just goes to show you that the the reward and the blessing of both uh, you know listening to God's call on on your life and and being obedient to it. And what we are all called to, and that is that is discipleship. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor Brandt. I appreciate that. And um, if you 
are listening to this and uh, and you're able to find it on iTunes or on our YouTube channel and, and you want to uh, give a comment or, or a rating, uh, we would appreciate you doing that. We want it to find more people. Uh, we're grateful that you've listened to us. Uh, before we close, uh, Pastor Brant, could you just pray uh, in, in closing for us? I'd be honored to do that. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessing of Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving your Son. And Lord Jesus, thank you for the witness that you give to us as spiritual leaders. Uh, first of all, in calling us, and then secondly, equipping us, even by your own example. Thank you for the way we see the discipling of your disciples. And may we continue to receive that discipling. May you reveal those mentors you want to use in our life until the day that we pass into glory. And then may we also be faithful in being mentors. Help us to conduct our life in such a way that we are usable in your kingdom. And we pray this in Christ's name.